Hey there, my homeowners. This is Joshua Sternberg from Sternberg Law Group coming at you from sunny Southern California. I hope that everybody's doing well. In this video, we are going to discuss the foreclosure process. More specifically, we're gonna discuss what happens with different type of liens if a property is foreclosed. Most properties have more than one lien. Okay, let's first define a lien. A lien is something that is secured against the property that usually has a monetary value, meaning money is owed on it. There could be other types of liens. There could be liens from the city, liens for having your property in disrepair. If you have a swimming pool that's not being taken care of and there's mosquitoes coming out of it, believe it or not, they can hit a lien on your property. So there are different liens that are non-monetary, but really for the purpose of this video, and for what we deal with at Sternberg Law, we're gonna talk about monetary liens. So people you owe money to from all different walks of life that in order to secure their payment, they put a lien on your house. Commonly understood liens are mortgage liens. You get a first mortgage, you get a second mortgage, often referred to as your first and second. That's the lien number one, lien number two. There are also a couple of something like an invisible lien for example, it could be property tax. When you buy a home, you don't really feel like there's a lien on your house from the property tax county assessor because you're not taking any money from them. But all of those legal documents that you sign when you buy a home, one of them says that there's gonna be a lien on this property from the county for your property tax. And if you don't pay it, that lien is automatic. Let's call it statutory, right? It's, it's by law, it's, it's just gonna be there. HOAs, homeowners associations, are also similar in the sense that they're not letting you borrow any money, they're not giving you any money, but you do owe these people money, so there are actual liens on the home. If you're ever interested in seeing all the liens on your home, call a title company and pull a title report. They're called preliminary title reports and it's a multi-page document that shows every lien on the property. You'd be interested, there's probably gonna be some easements for utilities. This is kind of a fun fact. If you have utility poles, which many of us do in your backyard, often set in the corner of the property, and then your neighbor will have another one at the corner of their property, and across the property line will be utility wires. If your county, if your city has to get to those utility poles, how do they do it without encroaching on private property? The way they do it is they have what's called an easement. An easement is a legal right to cross somebody's property for a specific reason. In this case, the easement would be for accessing the utility lines. So if you look at your preliminary title report, if you actually get one, you're gonna see uh, an easement from, from the utility companies. I'm in Los Angeles, so it's gonna be the Department of Water and Power, and they have the right to get on your property. If you pull a gun on them, kind of joking, but if you pull a gun on them and say, get off my property, you don't have the right to be here. They can show you they have an easement. Oh, actually, we do have the legal right to be here. If you call the police on us, they're gonna say, yes, you can access the property. Now, what happens when a property is foreclosed to the subordinate liens? Subordinate is under, right? Subordinate means to be under something, or we can also call them junior liens. In this scenario, we're gonna have a first mortgage, a second mortgage, a tax lien, a judgment lien. Let's just do those four liens for right now. If the first mortgage is the foreclosing lien, when the first mortgage files their foreclosure, they file it for a certain dollar amount. Let's say it's a $500,000 lien. They will file their foreclosure for $500,000 because that's how much money they are due in first position. If a third party comes and bids on that house, on that foreclosure, and they say, wow, this property at 500 is a good deal. I'm gonna bid 600. And then 600 goes to 700, 700 goes to 800, and that's the final bid. So the house forecloses for 800,000. What will happen is the first will get the first 500,000 because that's how much they're due. And then what's left over? 300,000. That 300,000 will simply trickle down to the subordinate liens and it will go in order of priority. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Now, what determines priority in almost all situations is chronological. What was recorded before what? If the tax lien was recorded before the judgment lien, the tax lien was in third position, the judgment lien is in fourth position, right? Remember one and two is first mortgage, second mortgage. If the judgment lien is recorded before the tax lien, 
The judgment lien is number three, the tax lien is number four. And the money again just goes down in that chronological order. So if your first mortgage is $500,000, your second mortgage is $200,000, your tax lien is $100,000 and your judgment lien is $100,000, that's 500, 200, 100, 100 with a total of 900,000 liens and the property forecloses for only 800,000, then let's see who gets paid. First position, 500,000 paid in full. Second position, 200,000 paid in full. Third position, 100,000 paid in full. Fourth position, 100,000, we got no money left, right? We capped out at 800,000 from the sale. So that fourth lien position gets no money, but they are wiped off the title of the property because the lien ahead of them the lien senior to them forecloses and they wipe everybody out below them. If you're the homeowner that got foreclosed on, how much money do you get in that scenario? Uh, you're right, zero, right? Zero. You get zero dollars because there's no money left over after all the liens are paid off. You didn't even have enough money to pay the fourth lien, let alone pay yourself. Let me give you another example. So in this scenario, first lien 500,000, but the second lien is only 50,000, the third lien is only 50,000, and the fourth lien is only 50,000, right? So if I do some quick math, that's 500, and then 50, 50, 50, that's 650 total. And the house foreclosed for 800,000. So you pay off the 500,000, you pay off the 50, you pay off the 50, you pay off the 50, that's 650, $150,000 left over, that's your money. Go get that money, that's your money. Now, I am going to do a second video, a separate video for what happens if the foreclosing lender or the foreclosing lien is the second lien position. I will call that second lien foreclosures. If you look on our YouTube channel or search it, you should find second lien foreclosures. I'll be wearing the same shirt because I'm gonna do the video right after this. This video will be titled, Understanding First Lien Foreclosures. Okay, thank you everybody. My name is Josh Sternberg from Sternberg Law Group. Any questions, hit us on the comments, subscribe, send an email, sternberglawgroup.com. Thank you very much. We hope this video helps.